okay? Um, this is a work, I'm going to fast forward to this slide really quick. This is a workout that we did when I was running at CU, okay? So here's the book, Running with the uh, Buffaloes up there. And this is a workout of 300 with a 200 meter float. This is when I was first introduced to this as an athlete at the University of Colorado. Um, obviously, Coach Wetmore at, at CU is an amazing coach. And um, I, I did get some questions prior to this webinar where people were we're asking, hey, why aren't we doing repeat 800s? Why aren't we doing repeat thousands? I will talk about that at the end. There, there's a great place. There's places in the season where those workouts make a lot of sense. Um, but obviously, successful programs are, are using this workout as well. Okay, let, let's get into it. Um, the, the reason we're doing this workout is at some point we want kids to be able to groove race pace, right? And so the, the, the question is, you know, when do we transition from the summer into September into the championship season where they're really grooving race pace? And if we're specific about that, like I talk about in consistency is key it, when I talk about race pace work, let's use the Bill Bowerman model of date pace and goal pace. Now, if we go back to September 1st, date pace, um, and, and, and we're, we're going to talk about a young woman we're, we're going to use a, a hypothetical woman who's running 1845 for 5k. I like those numbers because it's six minute pace for, for a 5k. Um, and let's say she's trying to run 1820 two weeks from now at the state championship. And so the idea is today her date pace is pretty similar to her, her goal pace. We would hope she's in 1830 shape um, in the middle of October going into a state championship that's maybe, you know, October 30th or the uh, first or second week in, in November. And then here's the final thing. We're going to talk about this several times uh, today. We're going to talk about going fast, faster, fastest. Basically, how do you switch gears in a workout? And that's what this, this workout does. Well, this workout doesn't do it if it's set up well and if the athletes do it correctly then this workout will, 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 will help you do that. Now, if you're a coach watching this, you need to have a good sense of what date pace and goal pace are, um, or may, more generally, you could just say you have to have a good sense of the athlete's fitness. So here I, I talk about we're going to use this woman. She's run 1845, let, let's say in August, and she's hoping to run 1820 at the uh, state meet. Okay? Um, and as I said, we did this at the University of Colorado. So – this workout can be done in any park with the kind of the caveat of you need your 300 not to have a lot of crazy turns in it. So I'm, I'm about to show you the, the, the field at the University of Colorado kit field where we would do this. And basically the perimeter of that is 300 meters. You want your 300 to be pretty much a uh, straight shot. And as I'm, I'm, I'm doing this live and thinking about it out loud, if you had a really wide area, you could do a big sweeping turn for a 300. And then our 200 jog, you can chop that up. And it, and it could be less than a 200 jog. It could be, you know, I, I think I put in the next slide 130 meters to maybe even 180 meters. But the idea being that, that and when I say jog, that, that's where we're, we're, we're trying to do a float. But if, um, I'll talk about later, if the athletes can't run race pace, then they're able to, to do a jog. But the bottom line is we want that 300 to be a pretty straight shot. But that that float re recovery, you can kind of squeeze that into to your park however you want. When we when we refer to this, the 300 and the 200 together are 500 meters. So when we look at the volume for the workout, um, we'll look at the the total volume. Oh, I well, I'll I'll go to this and I'll go somewhere else. Okay, so I'll make this a little bit bigger because um, you don't need to see me for this one. All right. As you can see, so it looks like it's three soccer fields, but when I was an athlete, athlete at the University of Colorado, it was just one big field, kind of like a kidney bean shaped kind of field. And so the outside perimeter, I've got the start of the 300 and the, the end of the 300. And then the float recovery um, is basically at the bottom there where you're just going about, you know, 80 meters, 100 meters and back 80 meters or 100 meters. And then you go the other way down that um down that 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 perimeter of the field now if there's three or four men's groups and it's a combined program and there's three or four women's groups and if if you're a high school coach saying wait i've got eight different groups but you do have to be careful in terms of when athletes are running this direction and athletes are running the other direction so um 
if I, I don't think we did this when I was an athlete, but when I was coaching at CU, I think there are times where we put some cones in the middle. Like, I mean, we didn't line 300 meters with cones, but actually in a high school setting, if you, if you got a hundred kids in your program, it, it might make, make sense to do it that way. And, it, and here's one ideal thing. Ideally you have a thousand meter loops and a loop and kids can run 300 this way, 200 float, 300 on another perimeter, 200 float. So, so they're j just doing laps essentially. Okay. Take a quick, uh, this is cold brew coffee and I just got to, uh, interrupt this. This is the mountain Vista aerobic monster coffee cup that I got a couple of years ago from my buddy, Jonathan Dalby at mountain Vista. I had the chance yesterday to watch them sweep all six races at the continental league meet. Um, a league in the southern part of the Denver suburbs, uh, mostly Douglas County schools. But think how amazing that is to sweep all six races, both genders, JV varsity open race. And this is the seventh or eighth year that they've, they've done that. So uh, yesterday was the first time I've ever seen that meet and it was a real treat. So plus it's cool to have I mean, we know it's important to be an aer aerobic monster, right? And and I, I'm not sure who coined the term, whether it was Timo Mostert at American Fork or Paul Vandersteen, um, but I know that that Coach Dalby at Mountain Vista has used that. So uh, I, I enjoy using that term too. Okay, so he, he, here we go. Two goals. Primary goal is we're running the, the 300s at race pace and we're speeding up the last one to two reps, okay? That is our number one goal. There's a secondary goal, which is we're trying to keep the 200 floats up tempo. So, so if you're wondering what a float is, a float is faster than jogging, faster than easy running, slower than threshold running. If that sounds a little vague, it is a little vague, okay? Um, when, when I'm doing this, this workout on the track with 1,500 meter runners, sometimes when they get really fit, that, that float can be pretty fast. This is a longer workout for your athletes. For a young athlete, that float isn't going to be much faster than their uh, normal jogging pace. Okay. But, but for your varsity athletes, we, we, we can assume that the, the float is much faster than what they would run on a recovery day when they're chatting with, with their friends. But here's the bottom line. I just gave you the primary and the secondary goal. You have got to focus on the primary goal. They have to run race pace. This, and, and I'm, I'm going to talk about why I like this workout at times over repeat 800s or repeat thousands or even repeat miles because it gives the kids a chance to run race pace just for 300 meters. And for you as, as the, 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 the coach, if they miss one of these, if they run slower than race pace for 300, you can give them some more rest and say, Hey, we're going to try another one. And, and we're going to try and run 300 at, at race pace. But, um, know that in the middle of this workout, if they run slower, you can back them off or you can just shut them down for, 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 for the uh, day. And I'm, I'm going to talk about that in a later slide, but it, this is not a workout. If we use our hypothetical 1845 woman, if she starts running three, three hundreds at 1910 pace, you have to shut her down. Okay. And, and this is a tangent that's important too. You should have conversations with your athletes at the beginning of the year that, Hey, my job is, as the coach is to prepare you to run your fastest on race day. And training is really important, but training is secondary to that. And there's going to be one, maybe two workouts a year where you're going to feel flat, where, where you're not going to be ready, ready to go. And I'm going to have to, quote, pull you from the workout, shut you down. You can probably have a lot better terms than that. I, mean, I've, I did this with professional athletes, and I would just use the term, I'm going to, I'm going to shut you down. Um, Oh, and we have some questions coming in here. So uh, I will definitely scroll back through the, the the comments and ask questions or answer questions at the end. But I'll try and and do do some of them now. Um, and James, yeah, I will I will do my best to to find that belay research and race pace is that target pace, goal pace, not date pace. Um, so when we're saying race pace, we are saying at this time of year. So that that that's a fantastic question. At this time of year race pace should be what the goal pace is two weeks from now, right? Because we are so close. So, so if, if we looked at mountain Vista, um, and, and folks, I'm not saying you should go do this workout next week. This is a workout that ideally you would have done maybe once in August, a couple times in September. And then, and, and the kids really know how this workout hurts as a tangent workouts hurt in different ways. And kids have to learn how individual workouts hurt. 
right? This there, there, There's some nuance to this workout. But if you did do this workout next week and you're like Mountain Vista High School and you've got you've got two weeks in the season, you know, yesterday was Thursday, today's Friday. Um, next week at the end of the week is a, a, a regional meet and then a state meet. You're well, when I'm saying race, race, race pace, James, I'm definitely talking about goal pace. Okay. Um, if you were to go back, let's say early September, then race pace. It, now that I think about it, when I'm saying race pace, I'm basically saying, what do you want to run two meets from now? Right. Well, two meets from now for a kid in Colorado is the state championship. Right. And if, and if kid crushes this at the state championship and now, you know, we're recording this in 2021 and there's not a Nike cross nationals, but there is a Nike regionals, but there's going to be some, some, you, you know, like a, a, a national championship. What, what you want the kids to run at those races is, is what, what, what race pace would, would be as well. Um, Okay, and then I'll I'll come back to, to some of these questions a little bit later. So glad you guys are on here live too. How cool is that? Pretty fired up about that. Um, unless I completely misunderstand the technology here, this will be recorded. Uh, the the software I'm using should record it, but I think YouTube will just uh, record the video as well. Okay, volume. I, I think a workout a lot of serious high school seniors do, whether they're they're boys or girls, but especially boys, is six by a thousand. So what is the volume of that? It's six thousand meters, and we know that they would do six thousand meters at race pace. Let's look at this. If the three hundred with the two hundred is a five hundred, let's do twelve sets of this, right? Twelve sets of three hundred, two hundred. Now we're at six thousand meters of work. Now, if the your next thought is, wait, that's only thirty six hundred meters of work at race pace. You're exactly right. It's twelve times three hundred. One of the reasons I like this workout is at this time of the year, and 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 again, when I sent this newsletter, it was it was three weeks ago. That that was probably the the perfect time of year to use this first. Is it was a great workout that was hard, and I really believe in breaking things, you know, in a binary way into hard days and easy days, and not very many medium days. Um, and, and again, this is another tangent, but I I, I think medium days too often end up being hard days. And so when you play into a week and you had two hard days, let's say a week you didn't race, you had two hard days and now you had this medium day that ends up being three really hard days. Right. But the uh, bottom line is if, if we say this is a hard day, their legs can recover from this a little bit easier because it's only 3,600 meters at race pace. Right. Um, so, so that's one positive. All right, let's walk through the numbers. Um, this is nice. You can come back to, to this, to this part in the re recording if you really want, but let's just break this down because I want to see you how I want you to see how subtle the differences are in times. So 1845 for this girl, when you break it down, so at six minute pace for 1600, so a 300 at 67.5. When she's in 1837 pace, it's only a half second faster. Those are 67s. When she's at 1828 fitness, that's only a half a second faster. Now she's running 66.5. And she's and when she can run 66s, and we're not talking about 66 one, and we're not talking about 65 nine, we're talking about 66 zero. That's when she's running 1820 pace. So there, there's one athlete who I'm I'm helping coach this uh, this fall, and his mom's the coach. He's doing a great job. He did this workout for the first time last week, um, and and I I had my daughter average out. I have a daughter who's in seventh grade. And sometimes I have her help me with things and she wouldn't average all his three hundreds because I, you don't need to expect the kid to run it right on the 10th. Right. I mean, there's going to be certain reps. Oh, and if, if you go back to the field at the university of Colorado, I forget which direction, but there was a fast direction and a slow direction. So with the 300, we'd be off by about a half second, not a full second. Cause cause it, it, if you look here, a full second, if we're looking at, you know, 67.5 down to 60, well, 67.5 down to 66.5, that's a difference of almost 20 seconds over 5K. Um, but all I'm trying to say is if you, if, if your kids can get this on their, their Garmin, um, you would want these to average out to about 66.0. Okay. So that's uh, to show you what a subtle difference in a rep time is for the overall workout. Um, I'm saying here that, that the crux of the workout is the F float. If I could redo this slide, I would. The crux of the workout, when you do this workout two or three times in cross country, and then I have a version of this for milers for, for 1600 meter runners, um, in track, the crux 
for the most for most of the year is that float because that's what really keeps the, the this workout challenging. Okay, but I would say if you're going to do this workout just once between now and state, or if you're going to do it between now and let's say a postseason meet race, running race pace, running goal pace is goal number one. But as I'm, I'm going to talk about it, and I actually don't know if I have a slide about it, but if we break this down, what we want is we're going to do 10 reps, one, two, and three. They're just getting into the rhythm of running what that pace is for, for, uh, 300 meters. And if you hear me use the term rhythm, I think that's important. Like we're always talking about pace, pace, pace. Athletes need to have a kinesthetic feel for what certain paces feel like. So when we talk about running rhythm, you know, what is the rhythm for this young woman of 66 zero feel like, right? Now we do that one, two, three. Now we've got four, five, six, and maybe four, five, six, seven. That's where the float can speed up. So, so they're, they're, they're running race pace. Now they're going to speed up the uh, float. So let's say they did that rep four, rep five, rep six. It's getting hard. They do it again, rep seven. And then what are we doing on an eight, nine, 10? We're going fast, faster, fastest, right? We're, we're our, our eighth is going to be our fastest of the workout. Then that float is still going to be honest. A, a little nuance here. If they slow down the floats between eight, nine, and 10, that's still a great workout. And, and I would, and, and I would, that that's what we want if we can't have the the floats be just as fast between eight, nine, and ten. So in an ideal world, all the floats stay the same. All the floats are very quote honest, right? They're 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 really honest floats. But if the workout gets through rep seven, like I was describing, and then between and then for eight, nine, and ten to be fast, faster, fastest. And, and what I mean by that is the 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 tenth rep is the fastest rep. If the two hundred float slowed down a little bit, that's fine. Not slowing down to a jog, but if it slowed down a little bit. All right, uh, I, we can go through this uh, quickly. Bottom line is, young kids, it's going to take them a while to figure this out. This and and if you're listening to this, you're like, wait, how is this different than a fart look? It's not theory. I, I mean, in theory, this is a fart look workout. It's just that. Unlike a fart lick, which we're, we're doing in July and August, and we're just running by feel, right? I, I don't like fart licks where you're looking at your watch and you're saying, hey, I'm doing two minutes on uh, three minutes steady, or I'm doing three minutes on two minutes steady. I'm going to look at my watch, and I want the two minutes to be at 5K rhythm. Yeah, I, 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 I'm, not, I'm not a, a, a fan of that workout. So um, this is is going to take kids a while to uh, learn learn how how to do this. But but as as it says here, after let's say reps one, two, and three, they 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 should have this figured out. Um, okay, I think I'm going to go back. Um, this is a good question by Mike. If this were done during the championship phase, could longer floats recoveries be beneficial? Even walk recovery, why or why not? That's a great question. And that goes back to why aren't we doing, you know, repeat 800s or 1000s? So these are all good questions. And these are going to be great ones to answer at the end. Okay. I feel like I'm not worthy of the coffee mug. Like these, these kids at Mountain Vista, I mean, they have this beautiful... Um, combination of being really serious about training and really having, uh, they have a ton of fun at mountain Vista. I, it, it, that's an important thing. Here we are talking about high school running. Here we are talking about high school cross country, having a ton of fun and being really good are not mutually exclusive. And, uh, we'll go on that tangent for one more moment and talk about the Naperville North girls. It, now, granted, winning is really fun. Naperville North Girls in Chicago, Illinois. Check out this part of consistency is key. Uh, they've Dan Iverson is the coach there. They've been second two different times at the Nike Cross Nationals. Okay, really consistent program within their state. But then they go to these national meets and run great. And they have all kinds of fun stuff. They have pumpkin. They they have pumpkin carving parties. They do this time trial, this two mile time trial, like late in October, where everybody dresses up and no, I. I think they dress up in the, in their for their their warm up, and then they they put on their you know normal workout clothes and run it, and then they do their their cool down in their Halloween costumes as well. Um, it's just those girls have a ton of fun, and they're also a national caliber program. Okay, coming back to the workout we're talking about. Nobody ever believes me when I say they should. Do, this is something I did all the time. 
I would take a measuring wheel and I'd measure out 100 meters. And I would have athletes. If you're, if you're thinking of doing this in the next couple of weeks, you definitely need to do this part. You wheel out 100 meters and you're going to have them jog back and you have them run three or four by 100 to get that rhythm. You do not want them blowing up this workout in the first one, two, three reps and have this workout go poorly and have them dying, you know, on reps four, five, six, and seven. And then the flip side is this is not a workout where you really want to shut them down after, let's just say, four, five, or six reps be, because the 300s, you know, they went out too hard and now they're slowing down because the the volume of the uh, day is is fairly net low. Now, if we go back to August and September, I think there's a lot to be said for, you know, athletes learning how to run by feel. Running by feel is such a, a skill. And so what I'm saying now where you, you measure out 100 meters and you have them essentially run timed strides, I mean, it's not really a stride because it's a little bit slower than a stride, but run 100 meters at the, the pace you want them to run this workout. And it could be 100 meters down, jog a little bit this way, come back 100 meters, um, going back, back and forth. But uh, when you really want to dial in this workout, I would do that as part of the warm up. And one thing I should say too, you know, when, when you look at the workouts that I do with athletes, when, if you looked at it, and, and this happened with Sebco and, and, uh, and certain athletes as well, people would look at, here's just what the workout is. And they were, would, wouldn't see all the running that came before and after it, or, or, or some of the weight room stuff before and after my athletes that I work with get in more volume before the actual workout, because we do some things like this. So if you're running a hundred and you do that four or five times, and then you jog a little bit, all of a sudden you have a, you have a thousand meters. That's just part of the warm of it warm up separate from doing Jeff Bollet's dynamic warm up that that I'd have all all my athletes do. Um and just a quick little plug, Jeff Bollet speaking at the Boulder Running Clinics coming up in January 2022. That's going to be awesome. On this same YouTube channel, you can find his warm up is a three part warm up and the first part we've shared for free here on YouTube. Check that out. Um I'll I'll put a link to that in the uh chat. Okay. This is a great workout. So, so we're running 10 reps and on the first three reps, you could, you could practice something where you have the athletes get out hard for hundred meters, then settle into race pace for the next 200. Then, then they're going to take their 200 float. And then one more time, they're, they're going to get out for hundred meters, just like you're going to do in the race and then groove r r race pace after that. Um, at the end of this workout, they're going to go fast, faster, fastest. So this is one of the biggest reasons I like this, this workout, um, th is that you can basically replicate what, what the real splits, like, like, let's say we had 5,000 meters and we broke it into 50, 100 meter chunks within this workout. You can, you can basically stereotype the, the type of race that, that you would want them to have. So I did the math on this and if we have a boy uh, who's going to run five minute pace, so he's a 1537 5K runner, I'm going to say he ran seven minute pace for his floats. This is going to work out to th this workout will be a little, little over 18 minutes. Let's say our girl, she's an 1845 runner. She's going to run about eight minute pace for her floats. This workout's going to be about 20 minutes for her. And what I love about this workout, there isn't a slide for this, but one of the reasons I like this workout more than I like uh, six by a thousand or eight hundreds or even repeat miles at, at, at certain times is I like them being engaged for essentially the race, the amount of time they'll have to be engaged in the race and a little bit longer. And this is a continuous workout. There are no breaks. We are going, going, going. So, you know, when you're doing your fourth rep and your fifth and your sixth, when you get, you know, into 10 minutes into this workout or 12 minutes into this workout, there aren't any breaks. You still have to do the afloat. And, and here's something, and I, I don't have a slide for this, but I, I think this is an overarching part of, of today's webinar, which is don't knock it till you tried it, right? Like if, if you, I, and I'm not saying you should do this workout in the next two or three or four weeks because it is a championship season, but fast forward to track when we talk about the version that, that we do for 1600 meter runners, and then fast forward, let's say nine months from now, more like 10 months from now, and it's mid to late August going into September and you're looking for a workout to do with your athletes that's, that's really challenging, this workout is really hard, okay? And granted, this workout could be easier if the floats turn into jogs, um, but this this kind of goes to that, that, that question down there 
Um, why wouldn't we just run 300 meters hard and take a, a jog? Because we want a stimulus both mentally and physiologically that's 18 to 20 minutes long. Okay. But it's, but it's not as hard as running a race for the, for the 15, you know, for the, 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 the 15, what is 1535 is five minute pace. Yeah. I, I, if you run five minute pace, you're running 1530 something. Um, it's not as hard as that kid racing 1530, but, but I would argue that for a lot of kids, it's, it, it's harder than five by 1000. Okay. All right. Let, let's talk about some principles and consistency is key. And, you know, I'm not always like, this is not a promotion of the book. This is to say in this book are all the things I believe high school runners should do. And one of them is to practice race pace. Okay. So that's what we're doing in this workout. And here's the deal. When I analyze, when coaches send me training or when high school kids, when, when I work with them in the, the summer months or, or, or the, uh, the winter months tangent, I don't coach. I mean, 99.9% .9 of the time, I don't coach kids during, during the season, but I do help athletes who, you know, don't have teams to, to meet with, um, in the uh, summer and winter months. And some of these kids that I worked with this summer, they didn't even get a plan. They didn't even get a one page plan about what, what they should do this summer. But, but when I analyze what they didn't track, you know, I just don't see enough race pace work in, in there. When, when high school coaches send me their cross country training, I don't see enough race pace work in there. So this is something that you need to be doing in the months of September and October. And then obviously November as well, if you're going that long. The summer is great. Let's build volume in the summer. You know, like I talk about, consistency is key, is key. Let's build the aerobic engine. Let's strengthen the chassis. Let's rev the engine with strides. But at some point, that work's done. And I, I know you need to keep doing long runs. I mean, I'm Mr. Long Run in, in a lot of ways. But at some point, we need to go away from, hey, we're building the engine, building the engine with, with just aerobic work to let's run race pace. And, you know, if, if we looked at metabolically what's going on in this workout, yeah, things are going to bleed into that, that lactic area a little bit at the end of this workout. And that's great because the last time I checked in the last thousand meters of a kid or of a 5k race where a kid's running as hard as they can, it's not all aerobic and things don't feel comfy and nice. Right. Okay. Another thing, prepare for, for running fast, faster, fastest. This is the perfect workout. It's super simple. 10 reps, eight, nine, and 10 fast, faster, fastest. And athletes, you've got to be able to switch gears in the race to finish where you want to finish. If, if, if you want to beat the person from the rival school who you've been, you've been neck and neck with or tied with in some other races, and you want to beat them at the regional meet or the state meet, you've got to be able to switch gears. Coaches, when are you giving athletes a chance to practice these skills in practice to then be able to do them in, in, in the race? So that's, uh, I mean, this slide is essentially the biggest reason that we're all here today. Um, or if you're watching this, if you're watching this recording, this is an important slide. This workout allows kids to practice the skill of switching gears. And if they're going to race to their potential or another way to look at it, if they're going to race to their fitness level, fitness that you've been building with threshold runs and, and races and long runs and all this stuff. But if they're going to race to their fitness level at the most important races of the year, they've got to be able to, to switch gears. Um, I don't know if it seems like all the races you can't watch for free on YouTube anymore. But if you can watch Woody Kincaid, a guy from Colorado, um, when the Olympic U S Olympic trials in the 10,000 meters, look at what he closed that. And granted it's a slower 10,000 up until, um, what is it for 9,600 meters, but his last 400 is 53 point, And his last hundred of his last 400 was 12 something. It, it was absolutely, it was an absolutely, I mean, it was just amazing that last 400. And again, there were other guys that were rolling too. And, and, and why were they, they running a little slower up to that point? Because it was really hot and the weather was horrible. The next day they actually canceled part of the session and moved it till the evening. But what I'm trying to say is in championship races, and I think it's easier to see it at the professional level sometimes because it's so pronounced, people are speeding up, people are rolling, people are, are, are switching gears. And I think too often we don't expect that you know, our fifth runner on our high school team that over the last kilometer, they can go 600 meters hard, 300 meters, you know, 600 meters fast, 300 meters faster, 100 meters fastest. I think the math there adds up to a thousand meters. Okay. So this is, and, and what you're seeing here is a, 
is a, a fold in, in the book. But, you know, one side we have tax on the other side and re, in really big font. Practice switching gears when tired so you will, will be ready to do it on race day. Okay, how hard is this workout? If you jog the 200s, it'd be really easy. And I, and I, and I think that gets to one, one of the questions in, in the comments here. If they run the 200-meter floats hard, I mean, this workout blew my mind at CU. And granted, the, the first time I did this was really a kind of a track version of this that, that Coach Watmore would do. Um, when I've used something similar to this with milers, they can't believe, and granted, we're doing it at, at elevation. They can't believe how hard it is the, the first time. Um, I had the chance to coach this, this man here, uh, Brent Vaughn. He won the U.S. Cross Country Championship. And as I talked about in the newsletter, we did this workout prior to him winning the U.S. Cross Country Championship. And it was the floats. I mean, he, he, he ran all the 300s at race pace, and it, it was a long workout for him. Um, I think it was 24 because he was run, racing 12K. So, uh, yeah, it was long. I think we ran 12. Uh, we might have run 10K. It doesn't matter. Here's the bottom line. He was flying on the floats. As somebody who had seen this, had done this workout at CU and then had seen it as a, as a coach for, for six years at CU, when I saw him run those floats fast, I want to say they were at like six-minute pace. And, and, and again, if you're at sea level, you're like, ah, oh, it's not that fast. It's pretty fast up here. Um, that's where I, I, I knew he was, was, was really fit. I think you want to find kind of the Goldilocks spot where the floats are honest, faster than jogging, definitely not as fast as threshold pace, but it's a workout that they can recover from 48 hours later. And this, like, if you're looking for a reason to not do the work, this workout the next two weeks, that's the reason to not do it now, because there is some nuance to it. But if you go back to, you know, you're planning your cross country training you know, in July of 2022, you absolutely need to consider this workout because it's such a great way to teach the kids to run by feel and such a great way to teach them uh, how to shift gears. Um, what we're going to talk about in a second is, you know, one of the, the things in the book is, you know, could I have run further or could I have run faster, right? When you're doing a workout, whether it's a long run or a workout like this. And I think, you want kids finishing this workout saying I could have done two more three hundreds, but it would have been an all out race. Okay. And this is just one of my, I, I, I don't want to see high school kids, you know, running all out in workouts more than maybe one or two times per year. And, and, and maybe in the track season, a time trial, and maybe in the cross country season, if a meet gets canceled, you could do a workout like this and saying, Hey, we're, we're going all out because our, 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 our total volume is 6,000 meters, or if were, you could water it down and do 5,000 meters. But I think for this workout this time of year, you want them being able to say, hey, I had two more reps, um, or, you, or you could have them say, hey, I had one more rep, and I could have crushed it. And we'll get to this in a moment. The, the last running of the day is not the 10th 300. We're going to do some strides or some faster 300s. So kind of these slides are out of order. This is a really important point and consistency is key. And if you're an adult runner or you're a coach who runs yourself, this applies to your running too. Know that I could have gone further or faster or both. And this really applies to long runs. If you can't say both of these things after a long run, you probably uh, weren't running that, that, that long run controlled. Um, I think you'd want to be able to say the same thing on threshold, you know, Long runs, fartlek runs, progression runs, threshold runs. Those are the four key workouts that I use with people in the summer. And you want to be able to say this after all of them. When you're doing workouts, you need to be able to say it too. Okay. Um, and then I, I basically uh, covered this one. Um, if you want to go back to this, you, you can read that. Um, end with fast running. This is another mistake I see people make. You want the kid, you want the athlete to leave practice with the fastest running of their of the day, the last running of the day, okay? And if I was doing this workout and, and I was telling an athlete to run the last two 300, so nine and 10, and run them all out, so nine is really hard, and then they have a 200-meter float and they're running all out for 300, then we might shut down the, the day there. But go back to what I just said. We want to run this workout 10 by, by 300 with 200 float, and then we're going to take five minutes. I'm almost always just assigning five minutes. Everybody gets used to five minutes. At sea level, it's great. Sometimes at altitude, we'd, it'd be seven or eight minutes. Um, 
But the bottom line is now we're going to run some faster stuff. So it could just be hundreds or 150 meter strides, 100 to 150. You could run in and out. You could do the Leo Manzano thing where for 100 meters you go 30, 30, 40, something like that. But the bottom line is the fastest running of the day is the last running of the day. And something I, I like for kids, and you might only do two of these, but you might say, hey, we just ran 300s. Now we're going to do two more 300s, and I'm going to put out cones, and we're going to go fast, faster, fastest. Because fast, faster, fastest applies to the reps, all 10 reps in the workout, but it also applies, applies with inner rep. OK, and, and this is the, this is what we want to end the day with. We want them running with great posture. We want them feeling fast. OK, and the thing you have to understand here, what we're trying to get is a neuromuscular stimulus. We don't care so much about the we, we gave them five minutes rest. And the reason we did that is so they can run fast. Right. Are they going to be a little tired? Yes. But they shouldn't be so tired that they can't run their fastest of the day. In, in, in those reps. Okay. So that, 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 that's why I put that in there. We're not chasing metabolic fitness We're it, it's almost as, as if the 10 by 300, 200, that was the race pace work that continued to build their aerobic engine that got them ready to race. And now we're practicing, Hey, is my nervous, you know, are you stimulating their nervous system so that when it comes time to, to really be able to switch gears and kick, they, they can do that. Um, and just go back to an earlier point. I just don't see this last part in everybody's training. Well, or if it's in the training, it's not valued as much as the, 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 the workout that takes you, the workout leading up to this took 18 to 20 minutes. And my point is everybody values that. And sometimes they kind of blow this off and, and the kids are talking and they're just not as focused. So this is really important. Um, and we're going to skip through these. Um, and, and I, I, this is something where, you know, you're going to have to have to decide what you want to replicate, what they'll need to be do at the state. What do kids have to do at the state meet or the regional meet or the league meet? And I'm saying, you know, for a lot of kids over the last 300, you might want to be able to go hundred, hundred, hundred. You might based on the, the, you know, turns on the course or hills or whatnot, you know, that might be, we're going to push for 200. Then we got to push for 200. Then we got to kick for only 70 or something like that. But, um, the, make sure that, that you have that in, in the, the plan for the day. And you know how, um, you want kids to execute a certain race plan in this workout. But uh, long story short, I really think, you know, a very simple thing is we're going to end with a couple 300s. Where we're doing 100, 100, 100. Okay. What if they're running poorly? This is going back to what I said earlier. It's great to have a conversation, you know, the first week of practice um, in, in July or August where you tell kids, Hey, there's going to be a workout or two a year. Nobody gets through a whole season, you know, rocking every workout, you know, no one hits every workout. I'm, I'm going to have to pull you from some. It's very simple. If athletes aren't running race pace, and as we talked about earlier, that that's goal pace at this time of year, if they're not running goal pace, um, you've got to pull them from this workout. Now, if, if they, if they don't hit race pace on six or seven, then they can go to a jog for the next one and see if they can get in one more rep. I wouldn't tell them. So hypothetically, if they're slowing down on six and seven, I, I wouldn't just shut them down there. I would give them a jog and say, Hey, go really hard on this next rep. So they can, they can end with faster running end with some confidence in feeling really strong. And then they just don't run eight, eight, nine or 10. But, but that's just, just my take on this. Um, you, you can, you can do it how, however you want, but the bottom line is that's when, you know, when you need to shut things down. Okay. So you can always reach me. Um, and, I, and I'm really looking forward to taking these questions. This is going to be fun. Um, I'm, <laughs> I feel like I'm old school because I want emails. Like I, I don't respond to DMS on Instagram. Um, I don't plan on responding to all the comments on YouTube, <laughs> partly because I did these videos, these short videos for high school kids. And I can't tell if I'm being trolled by the high school kids or not. Um, which is, which is mostly funny really, but you can always email me. Um, and what I do, oh, I didn't put my email on here. Well, my email is J A Y at coach J Johnson.com. So anyway, and the website coach J Johnson.com, if you go to it today, it doesn't look so good and it doesn't have a ton of helpful links, 
but uh, we are recording this in October, and by early November, it's going to be a really useful website. Okay, and and useful is a, is an important um, useful is an important word for me. Okay, this is a useful book. The aim of this book was to say, oh, I'm going to you know, I'm going to write something that's like got the soul of once a runner and, you know, the data of running with the Buffaloes and it's going to be really, you know, kids are just going to want to read it over and over. No, this is a useful book. This is a book that explains to kids. And if you're a coach watching this is well, the, the feedback I get from coaches who've won multiple state championships is I want the parents in my program to have that book. Cause if they have that book, which only takes 90 minutes to read, it gives them the rationale for all the things that we do. Right. So if, 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 if you're a coach and, and you don't have, have, have copies of this book for your athletes, I, I would say this, there's, there are, there's no training in there where I say, Hey, on Monday, you should do um, a speed development workout because there's some uh, potentiation going into your race pace workout for Tuesday. That's something I believe in, but that's not in there. Okay. And, and it's, it's really a helpful book to reinforce things like, Hey, we got to learn to run by feel. Hey, we've got to practice running fast, faster, fastest in our workouts so we can do it in races. Things like when, when I assign you a long run, can you end it saying I could have gone further or faster or both? Okay. Uh, and then there's the car metaphor. We're building the aerobic engine. We're strengthening the chassis with general strength. We could also talk about pre-run and, and um, post-run work. And then we're going to rev the engine, which which that's the one people blow off, right? People aren't doing strides. Strides is is what we need to be doing all year long to, to rev the engine. Okay. I'm going to take a sip of water. 1042. That's how long this took. 42 minutes. That seems pretty good. Seems like a good amount of time. Okay, let's scroll back. Now, I'm trusting the software I'm using to give us all the questions that came from YouTube. It's pretty slick. Um, okay, James, I will do my best to get the belay study. Um, it's a pretty busy next couple of weeks here, but I will do my best to get that study. Race pace, we talked about that. Race pace, we're, we're talking about. Um, and and that, it's fun to do this webinar live because it makes me realize when I'm talking about this workout, Race pace is essentially what you want them to run two races from now. And if you're wondering, well, why not the the, the next race? We're always trying to extend with these types of workouts where we're, we're really trying to groove a pace, something that, hey, wouldn't we, like, we don't want to put a cap on this girl, right? If this girl worked her rear end off all summer and is an 1845 runner, but there was something missing, you know, just just mentally or, or whatnot. But she's ready to run eighteen twenty five now. Let's make sure her her legs have have moved at that pace, okay? But this goes back to an earlier slide too. You 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 don't want a girl where you where you're saying, hey, we have to run seventeen thirty pace. I know you can run it. I know you can run it. Um, that 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 just sets an athlete up for something that's unrealistic, okay? So uh, John has a question. Coach did a variation of two by two miles and it worked great. Uh, two miles, hard tempo, five minute recovery. And then, you know, 1200, 800, 600, all faster than race pace, which went well. Any insight, improve, vary. Um, yeah. I mean, that's definitely a question outside of this. I mean, John, at, at, at the end of the day, if your team races fast and those are workouts that you're doing and it's the middle of October, you know, as, as my college coach would say, dance with the one that brought you, right? So if these workouts are working for your program, and, and one thing you should take from today is kids need to understand how certain workouts hurt. That's the biggest reason I don't think you should infuse this workout into your program this week when you only have two or three weeks left is, is because they haven't had that experience. Um, but it's a, this is absolutely a great workout long-term. If that workout has worked for you in the past and the kids ran great, and then, you know, you've got a chance to fit it in one more time. I, I think that's really helpful. Well, let's talk generally about the types of workouts we want when there's only two or three or four weeks left. We want workouts that are challenging, but we want our hard days to be more like hard minus, right? So cut the volume. Now, do we, do we, do we cut the intensity? No, the intensity is high because they have to be running goal pace and maybe a little bit faster. Um, I, I, I probably should have had this in here, given that the, the the girl was getting ready for the state meet. If she runs a bunch of 65 sevens or 65 fives and is running, I mean, that's probably low 18s. 
That's great. That That's the type of thing we want this time of year. But we cut the volume. We give them at least five minutes. And then we run some really fast. And I do like 300s, regardless of what the workout is. Like, like you could do your workout, John. And then you could end that workout instead of doing the 400 and the 200 at the end, you could do two 300s. It'd be the same volume that your workout has, which is 600 meters, and they can go fast, faster, fastest. So I really like 300 meters. If you can go fast, faster, fastest, or, you know, you can, you can have 200 meters. You can tell them we're going, um, 60, 60, 80, something like that. And I, and I, I'd, I'd put out cones for that stuff. Okay. Um, Mike H, if uh, we were doing this during the championship phase, could longer float recoveries be beneficial? Even walk recoveries, why or why not? So this is good, Mike. I think I misunderstood the question initially. Um, I don't think we want to make this work out longer this time of year. I think if I, I, the the total amount of running in this workout was going to be 6,000 meters, right? Now, only 3,600 were at race pace. But I think we want to keep the volume lower, right? And, and keep the total amount that 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 they're on their 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 feet low. And and again, I, I just I'm kind of stuck in thinking, hey, I was at the a league meet yesterday, and these kids only have what is it, 16 days or 15 days till their state championship. Um, as 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 my college coach would say, the the hay is in the barn. And as Coach Billy Nelson once said at the University of Colorado. It's time to eat it. Or he said, let's eat it. It's hilarious. Like what more been saying that forever. And then Billy said, let's eat it. Super funny. Um, tangent. I got to see Billy and hang out with him at this wedding um, of a, a former teammate the other weekend. And it was, it was awesome. That guy's a, a special guy. Um, but yeah, at this point, the hay is in the barn. And it's not that, you know, I, I, I've worked with marathoners. If if you work with a, a marathoner who's running a lot of volume, they're running 100 miles a week. Cutting to 30 miles a week doesn't make sense, right? Going going from 100 to 30. But I think the 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 50 mile a week kid going to 30, or even the 50 mile a week kid, you, you know, going to 27. I mean, there might be a time over eight days where it, you could look at a nine day period or an eight day period or a 10 day period where, th where the volume is quite a bit lower if you were to average it over seven or, or, or 14 days. Meaning if you put in one extra day of, of, of no running where they're doing a little bit of maybe Phil Wharton's AIF work or they're, they're doing pool walking or whatnot. Um, we, we want volume load. We want them to really be recovered. And then here's one thing too psychologically, and I'm going to post something on, on Instagram and, and TikTok and YouTube for kids. This, this, by the way, this is for you as a coach and maybe as a parent, and this is not for kids, but then there's a lot of other videos for kids. And I'm going to talk about being fired up and focused, right? So part of this question, Mike, I think coming from you is, don't we want the kids to be a little bit undertrained in terms of volume, in terms of volume? So they're fired up. So they are more fired up to race in these next two weeks than they've been all year, right? So it's their job to be focused, but I think it's on you, the coach, to have the training, have the volume set up, have the overall stress set up so that 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 they're fired up. Um, okay, old man uh glitting productions. He's been doing eight, uh, eight by 400 with a 200 float. That's awesome. I got to do the math because I'm curious. So that's 3,200 meters of, um, work with a 200 float. Now, now granted the ratios there, this is just for people that want to geek out about training. You know, that's a two to one ratio of work to rest, right? Um, and it's not really rest, but, but, but that's, that's a little bit different than I guess a 300, 200 is a 1.5. So, okay, Daniel, um, if you were doing 300s at the end of, uh, at the end in hundred meter increments, fast, faster, fastest, how much time between reps, man, I would give them a lot. I'd let them jog around and gossip, not gossip, but like jog around, talk, talk about it, like, like just feel good. Maybe they'd run 300 and then jog 300 all the way back. If, if we go back to that slide that we used, um, let's pull it up here. Um, of the okay, we're not going to worry about that. You you can picture that field that we had. What I'm saying is, I don't think I'd have them run the 300 and jog all the way back, but that's not a bad idea. 
Okay. Like that's how much rest we would want them to have. I mean, one minute, two minutes, three, they probably don't need three. Cause for, for, for that second 300, you want them a little bit tired and learning how to really shift gears when, when they're tired. But, but as, as I said, Daniel, I mean, we metabolically, we're not trying to get a stimulus neurologically we're, we're trying to get one. Okay. So, um, maybe the way to say that, and you know, people who've coached distance for a long time, when they first do a speed development workout, what they can't get over and athletes are worse, but coaches are this way too. It's like, we're, we're going to walk in between and we're going to walk for two minutes or three minutes. So it's the same type of thing here is that air on the side of too much re recovery, not five or seven minutes, but I, I think you and the kids will want to just take a minute of recovery and do another one. And I'd say, take a little bit more. Okay. What's more effective 200 meter hills or 200 meter repeats on the track? Uh, Rose runner. Uh, I hate talking about hills. Uh, and here's why I love hills as a coach. I love the hills in the suburb of Denver that I live. And I love hills in Boulder because there's lots of different hills and I know the grade and I know the length and I know little things like, is it safe to run those hills based on the sidewalk? Or if we're running in a bike lane based on cars and you know, there's this amazing hill in the middle of this neighborhood, then there's hardly ever any cars on it. There's it's weird. It's on a bus route, but the bus only comes once every 30 minutes. Hills are unique and specific. Hills are specific to your area. And each hill has a unique way it can help you and your athletes as a runner. So I hate commenting on this stuff. And so I don't. Um, 200 meter repeats on the track with 200 meter floats are great. I, I think underlying this, if you went back and watched this recording, you could say, how long is the stimulus and how intense is the uh, stimulus? And I think, you know, you could get a really steep 200 meter hill and produ be producing a lot of lactate. And in the month of August, if you did 10 of those, I don't think that's a very good workout. You could do a 200 meter hill at a gradual incline at 1600 meter pace. And I, my, my daughter, my daughter won a, a, a middle school cross country race yesterday. It was amazing. Super proud dad moment, proud dad moment because she was really competitive and turns out she went out a little bit slower at the beginning and then really ran well at the end. But the bottom line is she leans forward too much. Here, we'll do it this way. She leans forward too much. And the great thing about a hill is if you ask the athlete to run with good posture, they're going to have better knee drive. Everything improves. They're going to learn how to strike under their hips. So if you told me we've got a 200 meter hill and it's just this gradual grade and I've got some kids that don't run with great mechanics, I think that's great. Um, you know, Brad Hudson, I know Dathan Ritzenheim used this when, when Brad was coaching him. And I know this is a Renata Canova thing is those really short, steep hills that are about eight seconds. Uh, you know, there's a certain hill on the campus of the university of Colorado by the football stadium. That's perfect for that. So you, ha you have to know what you're trying to get, um, in terms of a neuromuscular stimulus and what you're trying to get in terms of a metabolic stimulus to know how to use hills. Um, okay. I'm going to check. Oh, I got a lot more questions. Let's see. Oh, no, they're all here. I'm checking this other computer to make sure that the questions I see here um, are are the, the same ones that, that came up. Well, folks, this has been great. Does anybody have any more questions? I'll, I'll give you a moment. 